Hey folks, Karen Bryan here with Nicholas Moda, who is facing Manuel Torres at UFC Vegas uh, 75, I believe it is, right? So um, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to, uh, to talk to you a little bit. What do you make of this matchup with Manuel? Because I think right now some people have you as the underdog. I think that's a very exciting match. And if I wasn't the guy fighting for sure, I would be like, oh, I can't lose this fight. I got to watch this fight because that's going to be a very good fight. And uh, I see, I saw on Topology that, uh, that he was like the 80% favorite. But maybe it's because my career, my, I, I didn't have an easy career and I fought so many tough guys and I've been fighting for so long. So... A lot of times, some guys, they, they have, like, beautiful records, but you got to see who they fought, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Well, it's not like your record is bad. What are you, 13 and 4? I mean, it's not like you have a bad record. <laughs> yeah, but I, I had some losses, and and but was to very tough opponents. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I would wonder, too, because a lot of time we get – um, especially, you know, Brazilian fighters that come in and maybe when they were younger, they just fought everybody. Right. And they, so maybe they sometimes have more losses because they just took every single fight that was offered to them. Would that, would you say that that maybe is a little bit of your story? Yeah, th that happens a lot too. And, uh, yeah, I think all the losses I had was like to very good guys, wasn't to normal fighters. So I think, <laughs> I think I have a lot of experience. Right. Well, for example, Jim Miller was your oh, debut yeah. fight in the UFC. We know just the other day I was working his fight. He knocked the guy out and he only threw like two punches and knocked him out. So yes. there's no shame in that. But you also had an injury. Is that right? Yeah, I had a because Jim Miller is southpaw and he loves to, to kick on the left leg on, mm -hmm. on the orthodox guy's front leg. And uh, I had a tour MCL on that leg. And a lot of times when I was uh, I was going to attack him, he would kick on that leg and I, was, I would lose all my balance. Mm -hmm. And maybe there was a little bit of a problem, but I don't think that was the main reason why. The main reason was that he has so much experience and he could, he could read me while the fight was happening and he could adjust to my game. And uh, I remember one of my friends, he, we did the Ultimate Fighter together in 2015, Bruno yeah. Bruno Silva, Bruno Bulldog. Yeah. And before my debut, he was like, bro, the, the debut's hard. And I'm like, no, no, not for me. Uh, this isn't going to be hard and nothing's going to happen. But then after that fight, I, I could see that I got caught up with in the moment because most of us, we fight for so many years and we dream our whole lives. We make so much sacrifice to get to the UFC. And sometimes the emotions can get you a little bit. It's just like you see some guys sometimes, like I saw all the Brazilian friend in his UFC debut when he was walking out to the fight, he was mm -hmm. crying. Because so much emotional emotions and my yeah. UFC debut was in the main event. And I remember when I was at the locker room, I, I read that song. The name is Baba O'Reilly. Of like course. That. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm finally in UFC. And I had like a little cry of not, not crying, like sad, but like happiness. Mm -hmm. And I saw that maybe I, I was too emotional. I was too emotional in the fight, and Jim Miller for him that was that was just like another walk on the park because yeah. he did that thirty times. And uh, my whole life, I saw so many fighters get to the UFC and do like two, three fights and get cut. Jim mm -hmm. Miller is there for thirty fights, so he probably is really good. But I still want to rematch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you might get it because Jim says he wants to keep fighting all the way up to UFC 300, which would be next year. So, oh, that's you know, awesome. potentially you can. But, yeah, there's absolutely no shame in losing to Jim Miller. And especially, like you said, in your debut, you know, there is so much emotion. There is so much. So you shouldn't, you know, don't feel bad about that. Don't apologize. It's, it's you know, totally normal. Um, but with that said, now you, you know, you then had another fight after that and you won that one. So, what did you notice sort of differently about the second time? Were you able to be more calm? Did you have a different conversation with yourself before the fight? Oh, yes. The, the, the second fight, I had 
a lot of different conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. And also I did my camp in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any injuries. I got used to the PI, to the Apex, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, first time when I came, because I came to, to Vegas for the first time in 2015 to do the Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, for years I dreamed about coming back and fighting UFC. I came to the PI in 2017 with Edson Barbosa, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, one day I got to I gotta get to the UFC so I can come to the PI because this place is amazing. Yeah. And in 2020, I finally had the opportunity and I got signed. And uh, I could feel when I one time when I came to fight 2021, I got so like caught up with with the media and everything in Vegas because since 2015, I, I was dreaming about being in UFC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now being here in Vegas made me so much more comfortable with everything. And uh, also, Sefo, I, I told you, right, before my last fight, I did my yeah. camp with Ray Sefo, and I think he helped me a lot, like mentally, and yeah, he has so many wisdom, and uh, I think that also helped a lot. Yeah, I love Ray. Uh, he's a great choice for you. I mean, yeah, the man has uh, has done a lot. And so, yeah, I mean, for, for folks who don't know, because you mentioned, you know, Edson, you, you've you trained also with Glover. Is that right? I mean, like yeah. coming from the Ultimate Fighter Brazil, like you really, it's almost like every single of the major Brazilians in the UFC you've trained with, the biggest name. Yes, right? yes. All the day, Rafael Dos Anjos, he gave me some advice. Mm -hmm. All those guys, I grew up around those guys and I learned so much from them. And I always try to learn more and more. And but now it's my time to to be the guy to be. Now it's my time. I'm 30 years old now, mm -hmm. and I have a long career. And now it's my time to use all this experience, and be smart and sharp, and start fighting more often and build my name. Can I ask what the advice was from Rafael Dos Anjos? He said that that I should be fighting more. Yeah. That I should fight more too. One of the one of the advice was that. That I that I that I need to start fighting more like three four times a year, and I hope I can do that now. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, the activity rate you're always you know the more experience you can get inside the octagon, and the more just in general that's that is better for you. So um, you do have a fight coming up this week, and you know strategically, how do you see it going? Um, you know, uh, right now a lot of the Mexican fighters are really hot. And just in general, the gym that he's at is doing really well. So what do you sort of make of the actual physical matchup against him? I know that has everything to be a very exciting fight because mm -hmm. he's a guy who fights, he, I think, like 95% of his fights ended in the first round, right? Mm -hmm. And just like me, I had uh, seven first-round knockouts. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a fight that has everything to... To, to both of us get a performance of the night. And uh, I think it's a fight that if I was a fan, I, I, I'm a fan, and yeah. as a fan, I would never lose that fight. I, I would I would want to watch that fight because it has everything to be like fireworks. That, that's why you guys say it, how you guys say it. Yeah, I agree with you. And I have to ask, though, you know, you were supposed to fight a little bit sooner. So, you know, you, know, you want to listen to what Rafael advised, but you had one of the most gnarly cuts that we've ever seen right oh, yes. so um maybe here in the edit i can i can put a picture of it in folks if you're squeamish don't look but what what happened because that you said like your tendon yes yeah. yes so i was getting close to the fight and usually i train grappling with jake shields but mm -hmm. a lot of times jake shields go goes out of town and yeah. he was out of town and i said oh, I'm, so i'm gonna go to to asimpex and sometimes there is some random guys, and but wasn't the guy fought like some Russian guy was teaching? It was a Russian Olympic champion. He was teaching some different takedown, and I did that, and I did in the way too aggressively, and I and I had but the guy we we crashed heads and it was so deep the cut. Oh, yeah. Oh. It was brutal. So how but long did you I, take? I, I still want to fight, but then Sefo said no because anything would open that in the fight. Exactly. 
Right. And then it would have gotten stopped. And then, and, and even if, you know, your opponent sees that it looks like yes. it's starting to open up, yeah. then they're going to aim for it. And yes. yeah, you don't, you don't want a doctor stop it. But, especially, uh, especially my last fight was going to be just like this fight. Now it was Ignacio Bahamondes. So right. that fight <laughs> probably wouldn't be yeah. like a calm fight. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So how long did it take to heal up then? Oh, it took a while. Yeah. And I never felt a cut like that. It was so swollen. I, I could feel like it was hurting and swollen. And I could feel that it was a different type of deep cut. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. it was. It was bad. Well, yes. I'm glad that you're healed up from it because that yes. was really gnarly. Um, and, and it was really hard for me because pull, pulling out fights for me is the worst thing. Yeah. Yeah, but that yeah. was understandable. I think even Dana, you know, was like showing it on his Instagram and everything of like how bad it was, right? It's not like, you know, it's not like you just were like, oh, I can't show up. I mean, you couldn't show up with that. <laughs> no. Then I tried to, I, I was very upset, but I tried to stay positive. I, I say, I got to believe it and something better is going to come in, come up. And mm -hmm. I think that I'm not saying, I, it's it's a hard fight also, but I think that that match with against Manuel it's even better because mm -hmm. he's a very aggressive fighter and Ignacio is a very like is like a counter type of guy. Mm -hmm. So I watched his fight and it was kind of like he was running the whole fight. And Manuel definitely is not the type that runs and the apex cage is so small. Mm -hmm. So that fight's gonna be a good fight. Nice. And it's also going to be a home game for you. So you should feel very comfortable, right? Being yes, in Vegas. I feel I feel like they're in Vegas. Yes. <laughs> right. So before I let you go, though, I have to ask, because for a lot of Brazilians, um, learning English is very difficult. Your English oh, yes. is really, really good. Thanks. And that helps you connect with the fans so much. So when did you learn it? And, and um, was it with that in mind, knowing that you'd want it for the fans? So... At first, when I I had a plan to move to to United States, then at first I stayed one month with Glover. Then my friend Mateus Nicolau, he was helping Marlon Morris to do a camp for a fight in, in New Jersey. Then mm -hmm. they call me and Marlon say, "Brother, come to New Jersey because you need Glover. Gene has only heavyweights. You need to train with lightweights." And mm -hmm. and he say, "Oh, you know how to to spar Southpaw because Eddie Alvarez." needs a sparring for Dutch and Puri. I suck at South Paul, but I say, no, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> then I, I moved to Jersey. Then I, I helped Eddie Alvarez for that camp, and yeah. I met Edson Barbosa. We became good friends, too. And Frankie Edgar, also a yeah. great guy. And I had very good times in New Jersey. I think I never lost any fight while I was in Jersey. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I became, I I, I became champion in the East Coast in CFFC, and that's what gave me the opportunity to do Dana White Contender Series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. So Yes, so <laughs> many histories. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to your fight uh, against Manuel Torres. Like you said, it should just be nonstop action and yes. uh, anything. If you, if, do you have a name in mind if you're victorious of who you'd like to fight next? I have I have some names. Yeah, I have some. I, I want to fight Dami Hadzovic. The I wanted to fight him before. I wanted to fight Perry Pimblet, but I know everybody wants that fight. And so, yeah. other day I made fun of him on Instagram, like about him being chubby, and and he replied me. <laughs> he said I still would. He said I still would come back and school you something like that. <laughs> And also, not in personal, but I, but I would like to have a rematch with Jim Miller one day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a few names that I have in mind. Nice, nice. Well, that's good to have a plan. Um, well, yeah. excellent. It's exciting. Uh, I mean, it's great to get to know you, and you are a very exciting fighter, and I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy your fight with uh, Manuel Torres coming up on the fight card with Marvin Vittori and Jerry Cannonier. Do you have a prediction for the main event there? Uh, I go with 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 I go with the with my new Italian friend Vittori, and because we train at the same gym, and yeah. and I think he's gonna win that fight. 
Nice, nice. Well, I, I really like Marvin. I have nothing against Jared. I just know Marvin a little bit better. Uh, and yeah, he's a wild man. He's, he's great. He's so fun to watch. So yeah, it's yes. going to be good. Uh, yes, awesome. Be good well, part. thank you so much um, for being here today. And yeah, best of luck. Both sorts. Thanks. Brigade.